In 2007, I enlisted in the Michigan Army National Guard. I wanted to be the person to hopefully give back to my community in some capacity. I enlisted in the United States Marine Corps back in 2005, straight out of high school. I found myself uh, fall 2006 in uh, Ramadi, Iraq. I heard the Marine Corps was the toughest out there, so of course I had to go there. I had a degree in Middle East and North African Studies in Arabic. Nobody was interested. I had $900 a month in student loans and no job. So Uncle Sam was kind enough to tell me that you know I could sign up with him for four years. And uh, I was in for a pre pretty rude awakening. The military part hits you pretty much as soon as you step off the bus at boot camp. And for me, the sacrifice part hits when you miss your first holidays with your family. My first 20 months, I spent a total of three weeks home. I'm leaving in two days. I don't know if I'm going somewhere hot, but I have to get on the plane and go. Men and women, when they sign up to serve, they don't always know exactly what they're getting into. Nobody tells you the horror of seeing a friend blown away. Nobody tells you that you're gonna have to haul a body for a quarter of a mile, pick up body parts and put them in a bag. Nobody tells you you're gonna lose. A friend. It hit me like a ton of bricks. Interesting, stressful. Absolutely tough. Our job basically was to get ambushed. I went from feeling like I was 21 to 40. You never know what's gonna happen and Murphy's Law is a hell of a thing. It changes you to your core. And we shot um, a missile and dropped a bomb on a uh, van, like a, uh, I don't know, like a, a panel van. And the door, the Panel van's on fire, the doors open up, people start running, so you're chasing them. You're now flying around to kind of follow them to shoot again. And there's the driver with no legs. I mean, he's bleeding. Um, I bet you're coming around so you can kill his buddies. You don't even really think about it anymore. Uh, you're just you're just doing it. It's another day, just another day. I was either shot at or mortared. Every day I was there. Then you get about six months to a year out. Um, and then it's, holy shit, what did I do? When I came home from Afghanistan, one of the more um, shocking experiences for me in my, during my military experience was um, the fact that my daughter didn't know who I was. She was afraid of me. My oldest daughter wrote this speech for Veterans Day. My dad was deployed for three years. Now, think back to your school pictures three years ago. Tell me nothing has changed. That's the true test of patriotism, the sacrifice. When you go into the military, they take six, eight, 10, 12 weeks to train you how to operate in that milieu. You don't get that same amount of training when you get out. One of our families has talked about this phenomenon often of even when the parade is over, even when everyone else goes home, I close the door and war is still inside my home. War is hell. Coming back isn't much better. Most people want to go back to small town USA, right? Wherever they join, they want to go home to. You can't go home. Home is not the same as it was when you left, and you're not the same as you were when you left. You're up here, and the world is down here. You don't know what to do with yourself. You can't sit still. You're kind of putting on a scratchy sweater in the sense that you're never really comfortable. You take the uniform off and it's something that you can't prepare for. You're crying yourself to sleep because you used to be so amazing and now nobody will look at you. When you leave the service, you're atomized. The, these military men and women are determined to take care of their business. Unfortunately, they don't really understand what they're, what, what, what they're facing. I didn't have the tools to recognize that my emotions had control. I didn't have control. 
One of the things we've worked to do at University of Michigan is to create these innovative and exciting programs to help service members, veterans, and their families make these transitions. The power of peers can not be overstated. Buddy Buddy is a group of veteran volunteers that help other veterans throughout the state. We have trained more than 350 volunteer veterans on how to reach out and connect to resources. Since 2001, 2.7 million veterans have returned to higher education. And then once you go to school, now you have to have add on the transition of starting college in some capacity. The specific program that was valuable for me was PAVE. There's resources available and there's people who want to help. One out of three children who have experienced a military deployment will report symptoms that are clinically significant. Strong Families works to help parents reconnect with their children around bonding and attachment, being able to read each other's cues, and being able to respond in ways that promote healthy relationships. Homefront Strong is an eight-week intervention that we offer in a group format and focuses very specifically on what the spouse is experiencing or what the partner is experiencing and how can we shore that person up. Research is coming out showing that our female veterans are struggling and they're struggling mightily. And all I knew was I was super depressed and I wanted to run my car into a tree. They're struggling more with suicide, more with alcohol use and abuse, and in general with their transition back to the civilian world. One of the programs I work on is near and dear to my heart because it's specifically for female veterans. They knew what I was talking about. They knew that struggle with transition and finding a job, keeping a job. I constantly reflect what my life would have been like had there been a program like this. It gave me a ladder out of the hole that I was in. The, the young people that volunteer today have signed on a piece of paper that they're willing to sacrifice their life for their country. We can't lose another veteran. Men's Band is poised to make an even greater impact throughout the country. We're seeing with this generation of veterans a true commitment to continuing to give. It'd be a shame to go through all these challenges, and I've been through most of them, and not be able to share this information with somebody else that's coming through that doesn't know that these challenges are waiting for them. It's been, uh, it's been great to be able to help people. I hope to do more of it.